ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله من بعد today is Saturday the 29th of November the 1st October 14th 2023 uh, today inshallah we'll explain page 361 chapter 25 so the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إذا رأتم مكان the disbelievers when they see hellfire from far away it means actually when hell sees them, when hell sees these disbelievers from a faraway place, meaning from the place of gathering or the resurrection of the mahshar. Because as the Prophet said, hellfire will be brought by 4.9 billion angels pulling it. And he said it has 70,000 uh, pulling spots. Each spot is being pulled by 70,000 angels. So the total is 4.9 billion angels. That's how huge hellfire is. So when the hellfire sees sees them from far away place, they will hear the hellfire raging and roaring, meaning it will make those sounds out of hatred towards them. How dare they worship someone other than their creator? How dare they worship someone other than their creator? This is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about also similar point about hellfire when they are cast therein in the hellfire these believers when they are thrown into the hellfire they will hear the terrible drawing drawing in of its breath as it blazes forth so you know just like a human being when he is exer exerting a lot of effort like running up a hill and you see that he's breathing heavily for air that's how that's how hellfire is doing. It's breathing heavily, and it, that's out of anger. It it almost bursts up, bursts up with fury. So hellfire is angry because these disbelievers worship someone other than Allah. As we know, all of the creation uh, submit to their creator, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, except mankind and jinkind who were given the free will. They were given the choice to either believe or disbelieve. So hellfire will be very angry that some human beings and jinn beings worship someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا وَهِيَ تَفُوَّقْ تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْظِ and of course, when we hear these things, our heart is at peace because we know that many people in this world are using their power to oppress, to kill, to maim, to shut the voice of truth, of reason. So at least we know that in the hereafter, of course, Allah's punishment always comes in this dunya. But at least in the hereafter, we know that whatever they did in this dunya, they sold their soul to the devil for a miserable price, which is this dunya. In the hellfire, the hellfire will take care of them, inshallah, I mean. Which means that parts of it, parts of hellfire, are almost separate from other parts because of its intense hatred towards those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hellfire is angry at these people. Imam Abu Ja'far bin Jari narrated Ibn Abbas said, a man will be dragged towards hell, which will be expanded and contracted. So hell will be expanded and contracted just like a person breathing. And Ar Rahman will say to it, What is the matter with you? The hellfire will say, He is seeking refuge from me. So Allah will say, Let my servant go. No, don't let anyone think that this servant is, is, is a disbeliever because Allah specifically says, My servant, this is a monotheist that has done sins that require him to be cleansed from. From the fire, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him. So, this is a very important thing. Let my servant, this is a person who is a monotheist, worship Allah alone. Another man, also another monotheist, will be dragged towards hell and he will say, Oh Lord, I never expected this from you. Allah will say, What did you expect? The man will say, I expected that your mercy, your rahmah, will be great enough to include me. So, Allah will say, Let my servant go. Again, servant. So, he served Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He specifically said, My Lord. 
another man would be dragged towards hell, and hell would bray out of him like a donkey, bray not barley. So when a donkey sees barley, he brays because he's happy, because he's going to eat that barley. Then it will give a moan that will instill fear in everyone. The chain of narrators, of narrators is sahih for this hadith. So the hellfire will have personality, will have a will, will want to do things, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with it according to his wisdom and mercy. Because as we know in other hadith, it will, many people will be thrown in it. The disbelievers, the Ma'athis that uh, died on sins that were not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and every time a group of people are thrown into the hellfire, the hellfire asks, Hal min mazid, is there any more? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his foot, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a foot. Allah puts his foot on the hellfire. So the hellfire will say, I, it's enough, O oh Lord, it's enough, O oh Lord. Because the hellfire is afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would put it out with his, with his foot, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So of course the foot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from the foot of mankind. That's why many khutaba, many people with the khutbah, they make the mistake that when they say this hadith, they raise their foot uh, to show that. That, you know, they, they say that Allah puts his foot on the hellfire and they raise their foot. They shouldn't do that because the foot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from the foot of his creators, uh, create, create, creation. The foot of the creator is different from the feet of the creation. Abdul Razak, they will hear it's raging and it's roaring. Abdul Razak recorded that Ubaid bin Umayyah said, Hell will utter a moan such that there will be no angel who is close to Allah, no prophet sent to mankind except that it will fall on his face, shaken all over from fear. Even Ibrahim السلام, will fall to his knees and say, Oh Lord, I do not ask you for salvation this day except for myself. So everyone at that point is going to say, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself, except the Prophet السلام, who was going to uh, do the shafa'ah, the intercession for the judgment to start and that's Al-Maqam Mahmoud Asa Ayyab Ataka Rabbuka Maqam Al-Mahmooda that's what Allah is mentioning in chapter 17 in Isra also this is the shafa'ah al-kubra and also this is Al-Wasila wal-Fadila Al-Maqam Mahmoud al-Ladhi wa'atta Al-Maqam al-Shafa'ah the, the intercession for Maqam this is one of the intercessions of the Prophet in that on the day of judgment, intercession for Allah to uh, start the judgment for all mankind, and then intercession for uh, some of the people, monotheists, that are supposed to go to hellfire for them to uh, be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intercessions for some people's levels to be raised in, in Jannah. There are different types of intercession that were given to Muhammad. Fatada narrated from Abu Ayyub al Ansari that Abdullah bin Amr said, like the point of a spear. Uh, this is regarding the verse where Allah subhanahu wa says, and when they shall be thrown into the hellfire, they will be thrown into a narrow place in the hellfire, and they are going to be chained together. So the place in the hellfire they will be thrown in is as narrow as the point of a spear. Not only that, but they will be chained together uh, tied from their shoulders. You seek refuge with Allah from the hellfire. So of course, when they are chained together, thrown into a narrow place, the blazing hellfire, what are they going to do? They will exclaim there for destruction. They will wish uh, to, to be destroyed, to no longer be alive, unlike what they did in this dunya. They did every single thing for them to remain alive. One of them wishes that he would live a thousand years. But over there, because of the hellfire, because of the punishment, they will explain there for destruction, meaning they will utter cries of woe, regret, and sorrow, wishing for them to be destroyed and, and died. Uh, the monotheists that will go to the hellfire will seek refuge with Allah from that will die in a hellfire. The disbelievers will not die in the hellfire. So when the monotheists die in the hellfire, their punishment will be over and they will be taken out 
and they will be put on the side of the river of life and they will grow back the same way that the seed grows on the side of a river. This is as Barbara Salam told us. So they were purified from the filth, from the evil that was stuck to them because of their evil deeds in this dunya. So the people of the hellfire, the disbelievers will wish for destruction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, exclaim not today for one destruction, but exclaim for many destructions. Say, is that better? Or the paradise of eternity, which is promised to those who have taqwa. It will be theirs as a reward and final destination. For them, they will be therein all that they desire. And they will abide therein forever. It is upon your Lord, wa'dan uh, mas'ula. So, is the fire better or paradise? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet O oh Muhammad, this that we have described to you about the state of those who are doomed, who will be dragged on their faces to hell, which will receive them with a scowling face, with hatred and moans. There, they will be thrown into their constricted spaces, tied up to their shoulders, unable to move or call for help, and unable to escape their plight. Is this better or the eternal paradise which Allah has promised to the pious among his servants, which he has prepared for them as a reward and ultimate, as a reward and ultimate destiny in return for their obedience in this world and for them to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to do. For them, the people of paradise, was called to make us and our families among them. For them, there will be therein all that they desire of their lives, such as food, drink, clothing, dwellings, means of transportation and scenery, and other things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of anyone can comprehend. They will abide therein forever. It will never cease to come to an end, and they will never leave it. This is what Allah has promised to those whom he has blessed and to whom he has shown his favor. That's what Allah subhanahu says, So this promise for people that obey Allah to go to paradise, it is upon your Lord, Wa'dan Mas'ul. Wa'dan Mas'ul means it's inevitably come to pass. So it's a promise that will not be broken. Uh, it's a binding pledge. Abu Ja'far bin Jalil reports from some scholars of the Arabic language that Wa'dan Mas'ulan is a means to say in Arabic that this is a binding pledge. So Wa'dan Mas'ul, that means if I don't do it, people will ask me why I didn't do it. And they have the right to do that. So it's Wa'dan Mas'ul, that means it's a binding pledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promise because no one can force Allah to make this promise to begin with. If Allah did not want to make this promise, he wouldn't have done it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy, because he is merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is shakur, he is thankful to his servants for the small things that they do to obey him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them huge rewards. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions hell, then refers to the situation of the people of paradise. This is similar to the passage in Surah Al-Safat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the status of the people of paradise with its beauty and joy, and then he switches that to the state of the people of the hellfire, and he tells these believers, all these good things that we're promising the believers, are these things better or these things that the disbelievers will uh, will uh, get in because of their disbelief. And this is the reason why the Quran is called Methani. It has rewards for those, you know, it mentions the rewards of those that obey Allah and the punishment for those who uh, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Surah Safat, after Allah mentioned the paradise, he says, 
إنا جعلناها فتنة للظالمين إنها شجرة تخرج في أصل الجحيم طلعها كأنه رؤوس الشياطين فإنهم لآكلون منها فمالئون منها البطون ثم إن لهم عليها لشوبا من حميم ثم إن مرجعهم لإلى الجحيم إنهم ألفوا آباءهم ضالين فهم على آثارهم يهرعون So as Hawat ala in Surah Safat after he mentions the blessings that he would give the people of paradise who are to make us and our families among them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks in contrast of the people of the hellfire uh, is that better entertainment, the thing that we said about the people of paradise, or the tree of Zakum that is for the people of the hellfire? Truly, this tree of Zakum we have made a trial for the wrongdoers. Verily, it is a tree that springs out from the bottom of the hellfire. The shoots of its fruit stalks are like the heads of shayateen. So the fruits are like the heads of shayateen. Truly, the people of hellfire will eat from this tree and fill their bellies therewith. Then on top of that, because after they eat from it, they will feel thirsty. Then on top of that, they will be given boiling water drink, so that it becomes a mixture. But of course, when they bring it close to their uh, faces to drink, because of its heat, the skin of their faces will fall. And then when they drink the, the, the boiling water, it will rip uh, their intestines, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Muhammad. Then thereafter, verily, they return, these people of the hellfire, is to the flame and fire of hell. Verily, they found their fathers on the wrong path, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they hastened in their footsteps being disbelievers instead of following what Allah naturally put in their creation, in their fitrah, knowing that Allah is one. And even if they found the truth, they will say, Even if they see the truth, they will say, We found our fathers doing certain things and we will follow them wherever they were doing. Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَقُونُ أَأَنْتُمْ أَضْلَلْتُمْ عِبَادِي هَأُولَاءِ أَمْ هُمْ ضَلُّ السَّبِيلِ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ مَا كَانَ يَنْبَغِي لَنَا أَنْ نَتَّخِذَ مِن دُونِكَ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ وَلَكِنْ مَتَّعْتَهُمْ وَآبَاءَهُمْ حَتَّى نَسُوا الذِّكْرَ وَكَانُوا قَوْمًا بُوْرًا فَقَدْ كَذَّبُوكُمْ بِمَا تَقُولُونَ فَمَا تَسْتَطِيعُونَ صَرْفًا وَلَا نَصْرًا وَمَنْ يَظْلِمْ مِنْكُمْ نُذِقْهُ عَذَابًا كَبِيرًا On the day when he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will gather them together and that which they worship besides Allah, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will say to them, was it you who misled these, my servants, or did they stray from the path? These who were worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, glorified be you. It was not for us to take any awliya besides you, but you give them and their fathers comfort until they forgot the warning and became a lost people. Thus they will deny you, these people that you worship and what you say. Then you can neither avert nor find help. And whomever among you does wrong, we shall make him taste a great torment. The gods of the islands will disown them on the day of resurrection. Allah tells us about what will happen on the day of resurrection when those whom the islanders used to worship instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, angels and others will rebuke them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ and on the day when Allah will gather them together and that which they used to worship besides Allah, Mujahid said this means Isa alayhi salam, who the Christians worship, Uzair alayhi salam, who the Jews worship, and the angels who the uh, Pathists worship. And of course, there are others that worship these besides the ones that we just mentioned. فَيَقُونُ أَأَنْتُمْ أَضْلَلْتُمْ عِبَادِي هَأُولَاءِ أَمْهُمْ ضَلُّ السَّبِيلِ Allah will say to those who were worshipped, Did you call these people? So 
to worship you instead of worshiping me? Or was it their own idea to worship you without any call to that on your part? So, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking these uh, people who are worshiping besides Allah, not because Allah does not know, but because Allah wants these people who were worshipped to testify against those that worship them that it's not them who misguided them, that they were they who followed shaitan and worshipped these honored creatures besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us about uh, Isa alayhi salam on the day of resurrection. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we'll say as mentioned in chapter 5, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِحَقَّ إِنْ كُنْتُ قُلْتُهُ فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَهُ تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ ما قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به أن أعبد الله ربي وربكم. Allah will say, O Isa, son of Maryam, did you say to men, worship me and my mother as two gods besides Allah? He, Isa alayhi salam, will say, glory be to you. It was not for me to say what I had no right to say because no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isa alayhi salam continues, he said, had I said such a thing to them, you surely would have known it because Allah SWT knows everything. You know what is in my inner self. Even if I think about it, you know it. Though I do not know what is in yourself, O Allah. Truly, you, only you, are the all-knower of all that is hidden. Isa AS continues, Never did I say to them anything except that what you commanded me to say, and that is what? To worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. So all the prophets, their aqidah, their creed is the same. They came to their people to tell them worship Allah alone. Describing how those who were worshipped will respond on their resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that these that were worshipped besides Allah will say, glorified be you. It was not for us to take uh, any awliya besides you. Most of the scholars recite fatha on noon, nattakhida, of the word nattakhida, and he's saying, nattakhida min dunika awliya, <clears throat> meaning it is not right for any created being, neither us nor them, to worship anyone except you. We did not call them to do that. But they did it of their own accord, without us telling them <coughs> to do it or accepting what they did. We are innocent of them and their worship. This is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يَقُونُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أَهَاؤُلَاءِ إِيَّاكُمْ كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ And remember the day when he will gather, Allah SWT will gather them all together and then he will say to the angels, was it you that these people used to worship? The angels will say, glorified be to you. They said, glory be to you, our Lord. They used, nay, they did not worship the angels, they used to worship the jinn, they used to believe in them. So because the jinn, what they do, the shayateen, they come to people to tell them, I am an angel, so worship me. So these idiots think that these are really uh, angels, but they're actually shayateen. Other scholars understand this phrase to mean it is not proper for us to take anyone except you as protectors or helpers. I mean, it is not proper for anyone to worship us because we are your servants and Allah in need of you. <clears throat> of course, the two meanings are possible and they're close uh, to one another. But these people who worshipped us, besides you, Allah, you gave them and their forefathers comfort, meaning you made such a long period of time pass that they forgot the reminder, meaning they forgot what had been sent down to them through the messengers calling them to worship you along with the partner or associate. And these people that worshipped the Isa, Uzair, and the angel besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became a lost people. Ibn Abbas said this means they were destroyed. They were good for nothing. There was no good in them. All these are closing meaning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells these polytheists, uh, Thus, they will deny you because of what you say. Meaning, those who used to worship besides Allah will show you to be liars in your claims 
that they were your helpers and protectors bringing you closer to Allah because they claimed that they would intercede for them with Allah but of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show them on their document that they were wrong and that they lied about the fact that they would intercede besides them and this is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّ يَدْعُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِمُونَ وَإِذَا حُشِرَ النَّاسُ كَانُوا لَهُمْ أَعْدَاءً وَكَانُوا بِعِبَادَتِهِمْ كَافِرِينَ Now he's more straight than one who calls on anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He calls on a person that will not answer him until their resurrection. So they're making dua to graves, to angels, and they will not answer them until their resurrection when they will answer them that they were liars and they used to worship shayateen instead of worshiping them. And these dead people that these people call upon are unaware of their calls to them. And when mankind are gathered on their resurrection, they will become their enemies and will deny their worshiping. Then you can neither avert nor find help on their judgment, meaning they will not be able to avert the punishment from themselves, these disbelievers, nor will they be able to help themselves. <coughs> by associating others in worship with Allah, dhulm here is shirk, is polytheism, we shall make him taste a great torment. Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا إِنَّهُمْ لَيَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامَ وَيَمْشُونَ فِي الْأَسْوَاقَ وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا And we never sent before you any of the messengers except clearly they ate food like you and walked in the markets like you. Because the disbelievers said, why does this prophet eat food like us and walks in the markets like us? And we have made some of you as a trial for others. Will you then have patience? And your Lord is ever all seer. All of the previous messengers were human. Allah tells us about the previous messengers he sent. They all used to eat food. They need the nourishment in it. They used to go around in the marketplaces seeking to engage in trade and earn a livelihood. That's why Allah SWT said about Isa السلام, and his mother, he said, Can they, they used to eat food. How can they be gods? They had necessities of eating food and then after that uh, going to, uh, to the bathroom. So how can you worship someone who has these, uh, these uh, basic needs? You know, a god does not need food and does not need to, to go relieve himself. This should not, however, affect their status as messengers because Allah SWT gave them good characteristics and caused them to speak fine words and do noble deeds and gave them miracles and clear proofs from which any person with sound insight may see the confirmation that they brought from Allah, what they brought from Allah was true. Because of course the test is for people to believe in the unseen, but if Allah were, were to show the angels to people, and then where is the test? Anyone will believe, that's why. When the major signs happen, everyone will believe. But at that time, their belief will not avail them, will not help them, because the door of repentance would be closed at the time. Allah says in chapter uh, 6 that when these major signs of the Lord come, uh, the any person who did not have faith or belief before, his belief at that time will not benefit him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here that Muhammad salam is like him, like the other messengers, they're human beings, they need to earn livelihood, they need to eat. Some of them die, some of them uh, uh, have to travel, have to migrate. And this is similar to the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَدْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى And we said not before you any except men or to whom we revealed our ayah to from among the people of the township. So Allah chose the people from the same township to send him to his own people except Lut alayhi salam who had come, who had immigrated with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Other than that, every uh, every every prophet or messenger came from the same town that he was sent to. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the prophets, وَمَا جَعَلْنَاهُمْ جَسَدًا لَا يَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامِ And we did not create them bodies that did not need to eat food. We created them as human beings like you who needed to eat food. Like you need to eat food. 
وجعلنا بعضكم لبعض فترة أتصبرون وكان ربك بصيرا. And we have made some of you as a trial for others to test you if you're going to have patience. Meaning we test some of you by means of others so that we may see who will be obedient and who will be disobedient. Allah says so that we can test you if you have patience and your Lord is ever or seer. Meaning he knows who deserves to receive revelation as Allah says elsewhere. Allah knows best with whom to place his message. And he knows who deserves to be guided to the message with which he sent them. And who does not deserve to be guided. And we have made some of you as a trial for others. Will you then have patience? Muhammad bin Ishaq said, Allah is saying, if I had willed that the world be such that no one would oppose my messengers, I could have made it so. But I wanted to test my servants by means of sending these messengers. In Sahih Muslim, it's narrated from Ayyad bin, uh, bin Himar that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنِّي مُبْتَلِيكَ وَمُبْتَلٍ بِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will test you. So he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is telling Muhammad I will test you and will test others by means of you, whether they will believe in you or not. In the Sahih, it is recorded that he, sallallahu was given the choice between being a prophet and king or being a servant and a messenger. And he chose to be a servant and messenger because he, alayhi salatu salam, is humble. This is it for today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all child tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the state of the Jews. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to our brothers in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save the innocent among them from the, uh, the savage bombardment by the Jews done to them and to destroy the Jews and anyone that helps them, the, the US or Europe who are helping injustice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy them all because they are doing injustice to poor innocent people that want nothing except their land back. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to whomever supports our brothers in Palestine and to humiliate whomever betrays them and their cause. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the best day of our existence that we meet him. And finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us of Muhammad in the highest palace for Firdaus. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa brothers.